Yes, yeah, so welcome back to the Sports Show. Of course, we sit here nicely in Adelaide in the COVID, mate. Of course, uh, we want to try and get onto the world stage. Uh, we've got a couple of superstar rowers in to join us. Uh, Jed Ortswaker comes in, Oscar McGuinness. Thanks for coming in, fellas. Howdy, a little bit tricky for you guys to try and work out. I mean, the Olympics 2021 are just there. Then you've got other events to try and qualify to get through that. Where does it sit yeah. right now with you? Oh, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's a big question mark, I guess, really, with, with what's going on. And, uh, you know, every athlete and everyone really has got to take an individual approach. And for me, you know, I guess the people that are surrounding us, uh, around us, it's, it's really just what we can do now, head down and, and, and get into it and see what, see what it kind of looks like, see what the landscape looks like, say, at the end of the year, really. Wow. Yeah. That's a tough. It's been tough for everybody. Yeah. Without I mean, regardless of sport or not, right? Yeah. It's been tough. Yeah. It's been a big tough one. What about you, mate? Oscar? Yeah, I guess like the, the thing that we were told just from the beginning was you got to train like everything is going to go ahead anyway. So even at the start of the year when things started looking a bit dodgy, but we still had this year to look forward to, we were still training as if, you know, 2020 was going to happen and World Champs and all that was going to happen. I have to ask you about, and you get asked this a thousand times, but to get into the sport of rowing, when you had a dad that played 200 odd AFL games, mm. uh, Freddie, uh, was it? Did you ever try the footy, or did you? Yeah, I think the the footy dream was pretty quick gone after I tried to kick. Uh, just pretty pretty average, to be honest. Um, you don't have to do that when you're rowing. So that's yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> the hand eye coordination, just yeah. not having that, it's big help. Um, I, I played footy in school here and there for fun, but there was never really any any push to do that from, from dad or anything, just sort of find your own yeah, way. And yeah. uh, to be honest, sport in general wasn't really big on my plate until I was 15, 16, found rowing, had a couple really influential coaches and sort of took off from there. How did you find rowing? I mean, that, that's not, a, that's not oh, a sport that you would go, oh, I think I'll try rowing. There's, there, there's uh, cricket, tough, there's right. tennis, there's... Tennis. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I tried all of them, I think, trying to, trying yeah. to find something, really. And then, uh, so through St. Peter's College, their rowing program there, uh, yeah. At the time, was coached by Sam Locke, who was a, an ex-Olympian, yeah. and a pretty hard unit, and sort of just fell in love with the principles that he would teach us and things like that. Okay. So, Jed, you came in through a different path, mate. Yeah. 2015 for you, you were in an accident. Yep. You know, tried to take on an excavator and lost. Yeah. Uh, mate, so you lose a, a part of your leg. Yep. What drew you to rowing? I guess, uh, you know, 18 months after my injury um, and, and rehabilitating and all that, and, and I guess the mindset I had to get me through that, I kind of got to a point and said, how far can I take this? And this didn't really know what it was at that stage, but how far can I go? What can I do? And what next for me was, you know, something that's quite big was would be representing your country. So I looked at para sport and one that stuck out was rowing. I love the water um, and learned pretty quickly how tough it is. It is a tough, sure. tough sport. You know, we don't get to, we, we, you know, it's not like we race a lot. We, we train a lot. We gotta, you gotta love the process. You gotta love the training environment. So. Um, that's how I got into it. Um, I chose that and we went down that path and, and here I am today, yeah. Jim, can I ask you a question here? That, uh, with Paralympic sport, with, with, uh, people that lose a limb or yep. lose half a limb or whatever, is there, is there a change in mindset uh, after the accident? Is there, a, is there more power somewhere else? Is there uh, that drive? It, Was it, that there before the accident? Well, or? I mean, I guess, to be honest, I, in a way, for sure, I, I don't think I fundamentally changed as a human being, but mm. what happened was I was tested. I was tested more than most people get the opportunity to be tested. And, yeah. and I can look back at it now, and I'm actually very thankful for that test because I've been able to grow more as a person than I probably ever would have. Okay. Um, and, and everyone's story would be different, right? You know, I, I got to roll a lot with, uh, last year with Will Smith, who's um, ex-scholar he, he, ex yep. at uh, St. Peter's, went to school with Oscar, good mate of both of ours. He's vision impaired, he's been like that the whole way. So hanging with him, it's like him, it was always water off a duck's back. You get to, everyone's got their own story off it, um, of what yeah. they've been through. But for me, it was, um, yeah, for me, it, it worked out the way it was. So. I made a pretty quick rise. Three yeah. years later, you're winning Very a silver medal, rise. mate, at the World Champs. And yeah. then, uh, you know, another one in the singles. And so it's kind of been a yeah. pretty successful venture for you yeah. so far. And then, you know, the Olympics are kind of just sitting here that we've tried to discuss Working. early. So Working. when you talk about your workload right yeah. now, what's, what's the motivation when you're unsure? That, yeah. that dream's kind of not really there it is but it isn't that's the hard thing yeah so that's what, for both of you that yeah. to, to keep training when the goal may not be yeah. there I, i'm just wondering what, what's the thought process getting into the well, water on the boat i think it changes so first of all when it got locked down right it was all right we're all home um and and 
We really didn't know what was going on. Uh, and I think one really good thing that we, we did as, as a crew, as, as, as say a crew at SASE and, 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 and a rowing SA here, is we really kept everyone accountable we, through just sort of you know, texting. We set up a platform, how are we training this per day? But really, when it, you know, when you've got to hold your hand on the fire every day, you know, because mm. it's so hard, and and then you, you then then yet that goal that you've been setting yourself toward may not be there. For me, I had I've had a couple of tough weeks mentally with that, and and I've had to shift my goals to being. They've never been set just on the Paralympics. It's never been be all and end all. But I've really had to focus on what else rowing gives me and what else I want to do day in and day out. And so being able to push myself, being able to be surrounded by athletes like Oscar and other people that I get to row with is really what I love, I guess. And that keeps me going that every day. Really. Is, sorry, Basil. Right. Right. Is that the same for you? Yeah, I think um, for initially when everything hit, it was a lot of you know pretty dreary, not looking forward to much, and then. We had a couple uh, talks with coaches and they sort of outlined that this is a good way to, to go past people, you know, like everyone's reeling right now. Uh, you can use this time and particularly in SA where we're pretty lucky, we, we were probably the mm. first in the country back on the water and to use that to go quick, you know, uh, not everyone's going to have the same opportunity. So take what you can and go as quick as you can with it. You must be you must be jumping out of your skin looking for some competition, like serious <laughs> competition, after picking up gold in the in the Trans Tasman last year. And you know you must be, wow, come on, I need a, I need a race here somewhere. I need to be getting into it somewhere. Yeah. Although you picked up gold in a in the double skull. Yeah. With, uh, yeah, that's right. Tom Williamson, who was a movie star, isn't he? <laughs> well, I don't know. Was he? I don't know. But you 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 were classed as a single skull, and you picked up gold in the in the double skull. Now I was a skull. No, <laughs> different sculling. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yours didn't take quite as much work. You'd have a record. You'd be a gold Rosewater medalist Hotel, at yeah. the Rosewater yeah. Hotel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you must be really itching to get at it. I mean, you know, without competition, it's, yeah. uh, it's tough. Absolutely. But I think at the same time, there's always competition where you go looking for it. So uh, even at the sheds at Sassy, you know, okay. none of us yeah. really are competing in the same categories. But you can always, you know who's meant to be going what speed and you can work off them. So even if one of the girls is going off, give them a minute, go after them, you try and chase, okay. they try and hold yeah. you off. Yeah. There's always something to, to push yeah. off of. Don't need much motivating, mate, or are you, are you one that needs a little kick up the bottom? Uh, I'm happy to train all day by myself, but it's certainly, if you're feeling sorry for yourself, these guys won't let you for very long. <laughs> Hey, Jed, I'm interested, mate, because fairly similar paths. When you when you you were, you were in the pairs, yep. silver in the worlds at that, and then yep. then silver in the singles. What, S silver what, in the pair again. Silver, yeah. yeah. What, what makes you go from singles to pairs? Singles to pairs. We train a lot in the single, uh, especially at the start of a season. You, so you, you sort of train a lot, and then and and purely because it just gives good boat feel, good fitness, and stuff like that. Uh, and then usually you get selected into a boat, uh, and it's okay. really what's on offer. So what a rowing Australia <coughs> offer, or what's what's getting offered for international competition. So our boat next year that we qualified in 2019, so the Tokyo Paralympics boat is actually a mixed coxed four. So oh, that's a different okay. boat again, and, and yep. that's the one I'll be going for in February if, who knows, if we can get there. Who knows? That's All a right. very good point. Hey, boys, really appreciate you coming. I know it's Thank a difficult you, time, especially really admire the ability to stay focused through a tough time. So really appreciate yeah. it, Jed and Oscar. Thanks good luck with the boys. Thanks, we'll follow boys. you with interest. Stay with us. Still, a little bit more to come on the show. <laughs>